What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Security Plus 601 certification. So let's get into it. In this video, you're going to learn about adversarial artificial intelligence attacks such as tainted training data for machine learning and the security of machine learning algorithms. In addition, you will learn about supply chain attacks, cloud based versus on premises attacks, and cryptographic attacks such as as birthday attacks, collision attacks, and downgrade attacks. Let's talk about tainted training data for machine learning. So adversarial machine learning is a machine learning technique that attempts to exploit models by taking advantage of obtainable model information and using it to create malicious attacks. The most common reason is to cause a malfunction in a machine learning model. Most machine learning techniques were designed to work on specific problem sets in which the training and test data are generated from the same same statistical distribution. When those models are applied to the real world, adversaries may supply data that violates the statistical assumption. This data may be arranged to exploit specific vulnerabilities and compromise the results. The four most common adversarial machine learning strategies are evasion, poisoning, model stealing, also known as extraction, and inference. Next is security of machine learning algorithms. So machine learning security is important because machine learning systems often contain confidential information or provide a competitive advantage to the organization that they would not want competitors to be able to access. Here are a few possible machine learning security risks. The first one is data confidentiality. So machine learning brings additional challenges to protecting confidential data since sensitive data is built into the model through training. In order to protect the system, System from this type of attack is necessary to build machine learning security protocols into the model from the beginning stages in the machine learning life cycle. Next is system manipulation. So when a machine learning system continues learning and modifying its behavior while in operational use is said to be online, hackers are able to subtly move an online system in the wrong direction by feeding the system inputs that retrain it to give the wrong outputs. Next is adversarial examples. So the purpose of this attack is to fool the machine learning model by feeding it malicious input and very small nudges that cause the model to make false predictions or categorizations. Adversarial examples are very real and therefore need to be planned for the machine learning security plan. Then we have transfer learning attack and this is a risk when a machine learning system is built by fine tuning a pre-trained model that is widely available. An attacker could use the public model as a cover for their malicious machine learning behavior. If the transfer model model is used, it should describe in detail exactly what the system does and what the creator has put in place to control the risk in their models. And then we have data poisoning. So if an attacker can purposely manipulate the data used by a machine learning system, it can compromise the entire system. Machine learning engineers should consider what training data an attacker could potentially control and to what extent they could control it in order to give special attention to preventing data poisoning. Let's talk about supply chain attacks. So a supply chain attack is a cyber attack that seeks to damage an organization by targeting less secure elements in the supply chain. A supply chain attack can occur in any industry from the financial sector, oil industry to a government sector. Cyber criminals typically tamper with the manufacturing process of a product by installing a root kit or hardware based spying components. Although supply chain attack is a broad term without a universally agreed upon definition in reference to cyber security, a supply chain attack involves physically tampering with electronics such as computers, ATMs, power systems, factory data networks in order to install undetectable malware for the purpose of bringing harm to a player further down the supply chain network. Next, we have cloud-based versus on-premises attacks. So many organizations are moving to the cloud or deploying hybrid solutions to host their applications. Cloud computing security includes many of the same functionalities as traditional IT security, which includes protecting critical information from theft, data exfiltration and deletion, as well as privacy. And there are many potential threats when organizations move to a cloud model, because although your data is in the cloud, the data still must reside in a physical location somewhere. And the following are questions to ask a cloud provider before signing a contract for their services. So first thing you want to ask is who has access? What are your regulatory requirements? Do you have the right to do an audit? What type of training does 
does the provider offer its employees? What type of data classification does the provider use? How is your data separated from other users' data? Is encryption being used? What are the service level agreement terms? What is the long-term viability of the provider? Will the provider assume liability in the case of a breach? And what is the disaster recovery business continuity plan? Now, because cloud-based services are accessible via the internet, they are open to any number of attacks and some of the potential attack vectors that criminals might attempt include the following. You have session hijacking. Now, this occurs when the attacker can sniff traffic and intercept traffic to take over a legitimate connection to a cloud service. You have a DNS attack. This type of attack tricks users into visiting a phishing site and giving up valid credentials. You have a cross-site scripting attack, and this attack is used to steal cookies that can be exploited to gain access as an authenticated user to a cloud-based service. You got a SQL injection. This attack exploits vulnerable cloud-based applications that allow attackers to pass SQL commands to a database for execution. You got session writing. This is often used to describe a cross-site request forgery attack. Attackers use this technique to transmit unauthorized commands by writing an active session using an email or malicious link to trick users while they are currently logged log into a cloud service. You have a DDoS attack. It is believed that the cloud is more vulnerable to DDoS attacks because it is shared by many users and organizations, which also makes any DDoS attack much more damaging. You have man in the middle cryptographic attacks, and this is when the attacker places himself in the communication between two users. You have a side channel attack, and this is an attack to compromise the cloud by placing a malicious virtual machine in close proximity to a target cloud server and then launching a side channel attack. You have an authentication attack. So authentication, this is a weak point in hosted and virtual services and is frequently targeted. There are many ways to authenticate users such as based on what a person knows, has, or is, the mechanisms used to secure the authentication process, and the method of authentication used are frequent targets of attackers. And then you have API attacks. So APIs are often configured insecurely, which can result in an attacker taking advantage of API misconfigurations to modify, delete, or append data in applications or systems in cloud environments. Next, we have cryptographic attacks. So a cryptographic attack is a method for circumventing the security of a cryptographic system by finding a weakness in a code, cipher, cryptographic protocol, or key management scheme. And three types of cryptographic attacks that you need to be concerned about in regards to the CompTIA Security Plus 601 certification exam are birthday attacks. And this is an attack on a hashing system that attempts to send two different messages with the same hash function, causing a a collision. It is based on the birthday problem and probability theory, also known as the birthday paradox, and it can be summed up simply as this. A teacher with a class of 30 students asks everybody's birthday, ignoring leap years, to determine whether any two students have the same birthday corresponding to a hash collision. Intuitively, this chance may seem small. However, the probability that at least one student has the same birthday as any other student on any day is around 70%. If attackers can find any two messages that digest the same way or they use the same hash value, they can deceive a user into receiving the wrong message. SSH or secure shell or encrypting an entire message that has been hashed can help protect against birthday attacks. Next is a collision attack, and this is an attack that tries to find two inputs producing the same hash value or hash collision. So a collision occurs when two different files end up using the same hash. Message digest algorithm 5 or MD5 this is a legacy hashing algorithm that is used to attempt to provide data integrity. However, MD5 is susceptible to collisions. By checking the hash value produced by the downloaded file against the original hash, you can verify the file's integrity with a level of certainty. And then we have downgrade attacks. So an attack on a computer system or communication protocol that makes it abandon a high quality mode of operation or an encrypted connection in favor of an older, lower quality mode of operation that is typically provided for backwards compatibility with older systems. This is what a downgrade attack is. Downgrade attacks are often implemented as part of a man-in-the-middle attack and may be used as a way of enabling a cryptographic attack that might not be possible otherwise. Also, downgrade attacks have been a consistent problem with SSL TLS family of protocols. 
All right, so this was my quick little video on adversarial artificial intelligence attacks where we talked about tainted training data for machine learning and the security of machine learning algorithms. In addition, we also talked about supply chain attacks, cloud-based versus on-premises attacks, and cryptographic attacks such as birthday attacks, collision attacks, and downgrade attacks. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and leave a comment hit the like button, share this video, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also, go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Security Plus 601 certification exam. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.